welcome back after the break. You join us right here in the heart of the action. Now, Robin, it's your first race here for Lotus Cup Europe. What was it like driving at such an iconic circuit? It's a dream. And uh, in a dream who's come true. And uh, I have um, driven supercars in many years, but we are not allowed to drive supercars in, in this uh, circuit. So uh, I'm really happy. Now there's obviously some daunting and intimidating corners. The Eau Rouge, the fast, really sort of powerful corners like that. What's it like driving through? It's like a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> so after race one, on to race two. How are you feeling ahead of tomorrow? Uh, I feel pretty confident. It has gone better for every uh, session we have driven. So I take a second here and second there. So uh, I think I can be competitive uh, in a time. You join us on the grid as the cars are lining up for race two on day two. Now Jeremy Lorenko is determined to hold on to his championship lead, starting on pole again. Now there's no question that the temperature is going to play a factor in this race. The track is currently just over 43 degrees. Now we lose Gregory Rass and Philippe Loop due to crashes yesterday, but it's time for me to move out the way and you watch the action. So it's the same grid as yesterday, but this time a standing start and also to say the white number seven car is going to be piloted by Lee Cunningham. This time round as we get the green flag waved at the rear of the field. The red lights are on. Out they go and the race underway at Spa. Who gets the jump? It's a very good start from Pole from the Renko. A fantastic start from Andrew Wright in the 2.11 to the left hand side of the picture as they arrive into their source. This time they're all a little bit better behaved. And Nick Abson follows through in third place. As the field roll downhill. Again, Lorenko's got the jump over Cunningham. And then a very fast starting Cherry Verhees who moves up in to third place. Nicola Ibsen slides to fourth. And Steve Williams, Andrew Wright, Nicola Ferrer and Xavier Georges. Andrew order of things slightly distorted yesterday with that first corner incident. Today, no such problems. The pack hurtle down the Kemmel straight for the first time. It's going to be hot work for the drivers in the cockpits as Lorenko trying to break away from Cunningham early on the pair of them already a little bit of separation to the East Ibsen Williams and then the rest of the field John Packer also looking to gain ground as he draws alongside and past Jean-Baptiste Loup and they come and then flicks through the right hand and downhill towards the Bruxelles hairpin the road falling away so so steeply it's already Lorenko heading towards Pouan De Ferrer driver aiming to gain ground in these early stages the Jonu Prache family flying in formation before we get on to John Rass as ever at the front of the production runners but Lorenko doing much as he did in race one breaking away from Lee Cunningham then we have got the Heath Nicola Ferrer next along and Nicola Ibsen under real pressure from Steve Williams Andrew Wright and the rest of the field will jink and jostle for position Walker also part of that group. He's the white Exige V6 Cabal just behind the sky blue and orange car of George. It's been a reasonably clean first lap. Good to see David Harvey back in the mix as Lorenko accelerates on towards the bus stop chicane. And the leading trio already reasonably separate from each other, but there is a lot of racing to go here in Spa and it's a circuit which demands maximum concentration from the drivers. It's one of the reasons the competitors love it because if you do let your mind wander for just an instant it can bite you in a big way at Spa. For Lorenko, yesterday his dominance was slightly undermined by some safety car periods. Today he'll be hoping for a clean run which will let him ease off into the distance. Nicola Ibsen, we can expect to see maybe challenging podium places as Christophe de Zondre under a little bit of pressure from Jean-Pierre Genu Praché. Well, for second and third coming together very nicely. Thierry Verheist just beginning to ease his way to the tail of Lee Cunningham. Nicola Fred, Nicola Ibsen, Xavier George in pursuit of Steve Williams and Andrew Wright. Off an excellent start. He's just ahead of Nick Walker and John Packer as down the Kevin straight we come. No 
change in the order, at least amongst the drivers right at the front of the field. Potential challenge a little bit further back as Andrew Wright really looking to ease towards the car of Nicholas Walker, and that is bringing John Packer into the mix. And Packer always goes quicker as the weekend unfolds. You see him going much better in the second race of the weekend than the first in most of the rounds we've had this season. It's no exception in Spa. Looking very smooth at the wheel through the Bruxelle hairpin. The road just dropping so, so steeply as it carves its way through the Ardent countryside. Of course, this section of the track, the purpose-built section of the spa Frankel's short circuit, constructed in the mid-1980s. It's going to be coming out of Stavolo in a couple of moments' time for Jeremy Renko. That's where he'll pick up the original spa road course public roads until his way through the last decade. There is Lee Cunningham, still under pressure from the Evora, and now they have got the exigent Nicola Ferrer as well. Good to come and Jordan Ferrer has shaken off Ibsen. Ibsen in turn, easing away from Williams, who has still got Xavier George bottled up behind him. And George, who was disappointed in race one, will be very frustrated with race two. In car then with Lorenko. Again, just little corrections from Jeremy Lorenko. This indication he's pushing very hard in still these relatively early stages of the race. Lee Cunningham now about five to ten car lengths away from Verheist and this leading group that was so evenly bunched a few moments ago. Now the real battle is amongst the two 11s, headed by John Packer. Then we've got Jean Baptiste Loup, Andrew Wright, Christophe Lazondra, and Jean Pierre Genu Prachet. They are all beginning to close up on each other as they filter their way through the bus stop chicane. The completion of another lap along past the Formula One pits complex here at Spa and then into the La Source hairpin, which funnels them on downhill. As you can see, Packer really at the front of the two 11s. That could be quite a nice battle for the open cockpited cars. As Steve Williams not quite as sprightly in the second race as he was in the first, and his principal of war of rival. But he's just beginning to build a bit of a buffer over him. There is Jean-Pierre Genu Prachet. Prachet now somewhere way clear of Benoit Roger and Natalie Genu Prachet. Back into the production class, that's Sven Pettersen in the 88 car. He is chasing Max Alves just up ahead of him to return to the fight for second place. It's still Lee Cunningham who holds it. Xavier George looks to the inside, Nikolai Ibsen. And Ibsen always front bodywork was fluttering in the breeze. He picked up damage in that collision with Gregory Rass in race one. I just wonder whether or not the car is not entirely to Ibsen's liking. Meanwhile, the production battles continue to race. There is Rob Woolridge. Vega just in behind him as Jean-Pierre Genevieve Prachet is being caught now by a resurgent Benoit Roger. So the two French pilots of the two 11s running in tandem. Lee Cunningham in second place still clear of the heat. There we got Nicolas Ferrer in fourth. Fifth for Steve Williams. Then we've got Xavier Georges and Nicolas Ibsen. So Williams in the Avora picking up his pace as we begin to move towards the middle of the race. It's enabling him to pull clear of the Siege V6 Capaz. It's been a great weekend for that man, Nicolas Ferrer, in fourth. He's not particularly on the podium in race one, but he was right up there and was the open class winner. He's looking well set to be able to repeat that trick again in race two. So here is the race leader, Jeremy Lorenko. There is the empty asphalt sense of time passing before in second place here comes Lee Cunningham and Cunningham has just done enough at the moment to shake off Verheese then Ferrer really flinging that exige and Steve Williams looking increasingly ominous in the Avora a little bit of a slide from Nicolai Ibsen it means that Xavier George is now just beginning to build a little bit of a buffer over Ibsen as the pair of them Negotiate the bus stop chicane with no undue drama. 
Don't forget, it's a 30 minute or so timed race. And so they're not running to a set number of laps. They've just got to keep going at the rhythm they need to. Being aware of where they are in the race and knowing how much life they've got left in the tyres. And therefore, when they want to push. So downhill past the tribunes. Very enthusiastic and knowledgeable fans always to be found here at Spa Francorchamps. But the road compresses out just at the bottom of Eau Rouge and then climbs up into Radion. Where is second place man Lee Cunningham through the heat haze? Advantage over the heat seems to grow each and every time we see those cars. The gap from Nicolas Ferrer though to Steve Williams would appear to be inexorably moving downward I'd suggest because each and every shot, the gap between the pair of them is just a little bit shorter than it was on the previous occasion. More battles to be found throughout the field. There's Anthony Fournier in the multicolored 211. Finds himself being demoted at La Source. He's going to look to fight back, though, as they roll downhill. And that is Robin Nilsson, with whom he's doing battle. It's Nilsson who's got the advantage just for the moment. And they've got Nicolas Gambini just in behind them as Jean-Pierre Genin Praché and Benoit Roger continue their fight. Meanwhile, Max Alves has got David McAnulty up behind him and McAnulty heading past. This place gained for the driver had that spectacular incident in race one at Eau Rouge. He's working very hard to get the car prepared in time for the second race. Nicolai Ibsen, another driver in the rewards in race one, just beginning to drop away now from the leading group. All the while, though, ever since the red lights come out, it has been Jeremy Lorenko at the front of the field. But now the race gets to be that little bit more complicated because he is about to catch the traffic. And that is when he really has to have his wits about him. So as Lorenko leads the way at Spa, we're going to take a short break. Join us in a couple of moments' time to see if he can hold on to make a clean sweep of the Spa weekend in the Lotus Cup Europe. 